Hey guys, we are live at five. It's Monday. What's the date, Beth? It's November sixth. November sixth. I'm Paul Wontorek. Yeah. I'm Beth Stevens. And oh, somebody we really like is here. Someone really. Jim Perrick is here, who's in the terrific new off Broadway play. What we're up against. What we're up against. And it's Teresa Rebeck's, uh, well, we're going to talk to him about it. We're going to find out more what about it. I saw well, it last week. Well, we love week. Teresa Rebeck. Uh, Great and cast. And he is that fantastic and of Mice and Men. Oh, yeah. True Blood, I'm sure there's a lot of Hoyt. There's always like, I feel like there's always Hoyt groupies in the house. Is right? that what they're Isn't called, it? groupies? Everybody that makes Hoyt. sense. Groupies. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, but news. News. Well, before we even start the news, happy oh. first preview yeah. to SpongeBob SquarePants. So uh, everyone in Bikini Bottom is having their first That's performance right. tonight. Yeah. I can't wait to see it and figure out everything I need to know yeah. about SpongeBob SquarePants. Because we're old, but I don't know much. yeah, opens December 4th at the Palace Theater. And of course, you can catch up with the backstage goings on with Lily Cooper, whose vlog will yeah. air tomorrow, starting tomorrow. Cool. Uh, will be episode two. But, but there's big, big news, news today about a well loved Broadway star. Correct. So go ahead. I tell love them. saying this Tony winner, Kelly O'Hara. Kelly O'Hara is going to star in Kiss Me Kate, not this year, not next year, in 2019. What? It's yeah. that far off? It's February 2019. We don't have a venue yet, of course. This is. Kelly O'Hara has long had her career booked she many maps years ahead. She out, doesn't I feel she? Like she's good she is an organized lady. <laughs> so, of course, she's going to play the lead role of Kate. Slash Lily, Lily Vanessi. Yeah. Yeah. And it's directed by Scott Ellis and choreographed by Warren Carlyle. Fabulous. Why do they say that slash thing? I never get that. Because it's a show within a show. But, so, so she she's an actress Lily. playing a character, though. She's a so why do you have to say the character? Why isn't she just the actress? It's an excellent question, Paul. And we will ask our theater historians, please write in and tell us why. We're never, they're, they're never going to change we'll it for me. But anyway, That's the how they do it. That is how they do it. I'm sorry. Her name is Lily Vanessi, <laughs> but she plays... They're not really dual roles. Kate. I don't, I'm not going to make a thing of this. Oh, you already did. Uh, of course, last year, Kelly and Will Chase did a benefit concert of the So now show. we know whenever the Roundabout Theater does a benefit concert of a musical... There might be a full production in a couple playing, years. <laughs> they did the same thing with Kiss Me, with uh, uh, She Loves Me. That's and true. aren't they doing Damn Yankees? Is that Roundabout? Yeah. So maybe next year, or 2024... <laughs> Damn Yankees, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, that's coming. That's coming uh, in February 2019. Scott cool. Ellis. Cool. Good stuff, That's right? going to be fun. Yeah. That's a good show. Uh, stuffed. Lisa Lampanelli was here, what, like a month? She's so much fun. I love her so much. Her debut play, Stuffed, is closing, unfortunately, um, at the West Side Theater. It actually started at the WP Theater, where Jim Parrick's play is playing. Uh, the final performance is November 19th. It played 31 preview, 23 regular performances. You know, you got to love Lisa Lampanelli. She I has such her. a great attitude. They, they, you know, she made a statement saying like, you know, this is all about body issues and women's relationships with uh, food. And if, I, if we just changed one person's life, then it was worth it. And she was, you know, she went on and on about how much she loves the theater world and everybody. And so anyway, uh, go see Stuffed. Go support Lisa Lampanelli. I, I'm thrilled that she did this. It was sort of a great, very personal project that she poured her heart into. It stars Lisa, Marsha, Stephanie, Blake, Lauren, Ann Brickman, and Eden Mallon. It's directed by Jackson Gay. And it's closing on the 19th. Okay. But now hopefully Lisa Lampanelli will be again here yeah. in this room sometime soon. We just want to hang out with her. Come right? by anytime. She's the best. She's the best. Well, uh, I've got some good news now. The Portuguese Kid is a hit. This is at MTC, New York City Center, stage one, and it's extended again. So it was originally set to close November 26th. Now it's closing on December 10th. Of course, it stars Jason Alexander and Sherry Renee Wow, that's, Scott a, that's like an extra two Mary weeks. And Mary Testa having the time of her life. So that is great. Is it, is it Mary Testa? Mary I haven't seen Testa it yet. Mary Testa is having the time of her life. Is in she this chewing show. up the scenery? Yes, and it's wonderful. <laughs> we love her. It's for a wonderful it. thing. <laughs> uh, Eva Noblezada, the star of Broadway's Miss Saigon, surprised everyone and got married this weekend. Surprise wedding. Well, I mean, I we mean, didn't even know. Us. She hasn't never was very loud about the engagement. I knew she was engaged because I went to see her concert and she mentioned in the show she was engaged. And I was like, what? What? She's engaged? <laughs> she was engaged and now she's married. Uh, Leo Roberts is the handsome husband. She met him. He's a Brit. He's very tall. I met him. He's super tall. Uh, they met when she was in London, you know, before she went into Miss Saigon in London, uh, Cameron McIntosh put her in the ensemble of Les Mis, which is interesting right. to sort of get her used to, you know, the theater world. And she was young. She's right out of high school. Anyway, uh, and that's where they met. So they've been dating ever since. And he's been sort of, you know, he's on featured her, on her vlog. He's been, right. Of course. Of <laughs> course. Uh, American Dream. And American he's Dream. been sort of by her side this whole time. So congratulations. Okay. 
we knew that Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote a memoir. We knew this. Yeah. And we knew dad. it was coming out. We call him dad because of Imogen Lloyd Webber. If, if you follow us, Sometimes you know that. Sometimes we call him dad. Not to his face, usually. But anyway, um, we knew it was coming out March 6th, and we knew that uh, it is coinciding with his 70th birthday, which of course is not March 6th. It's... March 22nd, always so, also Sondheim's birthday. They always have to play that video. Was I supposed to remember the date? Yeah. I knew it was the same it's, birthday. It's as, a musical theater, National I'm Holiday. Sorry, I'm anyway, sorry. Anyway, today the cover was revealed. So you can check that out on Broadway.com and see the cover of Unmasked, the Andrew Lloyd Webber memoir. And it's not a photo of Andrew Lloyd Webber with a mask on. No. Spoiler. Yeah. So that maybe was a you cover don't of Time Magazine. <laughs> like in the, eight, in the 80s, that was a cover of Time Magazine. Anyway, uh, Culture List. We did a Culture List this weekend. Uh, your favorite end of the woods songs. What was the occasion? The anniversary. Characters, not songs. Oh, sorry, characters. characters. But it was the thirtieth well, anniversary was right. November fifth yesterday. Okay, the thirtieth anniversary. Well, why isn't there a revival? Let's get that going. There have been two. Um, I know, but <laughs> uh, Plus every high your school favorite world. characters. Number three is the Baker's wife. She's my favorite. You know, she. Then you needed to vote more. She in basically has an affair in the woods and then gets killed. Oh, spoiler wow. Spo for anyone who hasn't seen it. First. Number two is Cinderella, and number one is The Witch. And now The Witch just won another culture list recently. She won for favorite Mean Girl. <laughs> so put People The Witch on the a witch. list, and she's going to win. You know what? She's got good songs. Also on the site, so The Lion King's 20th anniversary celebration yeah. was last night. And we have photos of that. And there was a surprise performance by Elton John singing Circle of Life, of course. Yeah. And we also have pictures of Jason Mraz's first performance in Waitress, which was Friday. So happy occasions. Go check and out the box pictures. office. Just the had a nice box boost. office zoomed. It yeah. zoomed up. Jason Mraz. Jason Mraz. Yeah. Talented guy. Welcome to Broadway, Jason Mraz. Yeah. All right. All I'm right. going to get out of here. You've okay. got a fancy guest. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll be right back with Jim Perry. Carol King Musical. Broadway's Come From Away is a best musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. Hey everyone, we are back at Live at Five, and I'm joined by Jim Parrott. Welcome, sir. Good Thank to see you. you. Sir. Appreciate it. Good to see you too. You are uh, back. You're, you're back on the New York stage. Yep. Uh, you, we've seen you on TV. We've seen you big, on the big screen. We've seen you on Broadway, and now you're at the. We were actually talking before we went on air. The WP Theater. Yep. Which is a nice, intimate, off-Broadway space where basically, like, the the audience just goes like straight up, right? You're just kind of like looking yeah. at a wall of people. Yeah. Is yeah. that weird? Being like having all those people staring at you so close. No, it doesn't feel like it. Most, most, it's not weird. Most of the theater I did in LA before I moved to New uh -huh. York was like in 36 seat right. houses or, you know, 24 seat houses or 50 right. was like a big one. And there was no room. Everybody was tight. So, yeah. Feels, feels familiar. Feels like home. A little bigger than usual. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, let's talk about this play. This is Teresa Reback. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong. She wrote this play a while ago. And then she, kind of has been re... And she was there when I went yeah. last week. She was in the audience. She looked like she was taking notes. And she's all over it, right? Yeah, she's all over it. She she wrote... <clears throat> what she told me is she wrote the first scene in 1992. Okay. For part of a one-act festival. Um, and I think it was inspired by some things that she was going through at work. Feel, feeling like there was a boys club um, yeah. in the world of... I think it was television writing. And so she w wrote just one scene. of These two men kind of talking about... You know this this girl who supplanted her uh, plans in an architectural firm yep. and put the name of a male on it, and uh, the guy said it was good when he thought it was a guy's mm. plan, and said it was not so good when he found out it was hers. Right. And I think she left it at that, and then she said over the years she would write 
and work out bits of it. And then um, I think it's gone up a few times. Yeah. Like I think it went up in DC in 2011 or 15 or something. Right. And then, but she's been rewriting and reworking it this whole time. Cool. The whole rehearsal process. Yeah. And of course, a lot of you know she she created Smash. With yeah. A lot of Smash fans out there. She's a great playwright. Um, so, what attracted you to this project? Mostly Teresa. I, um, I uh, did a movie with her and Angelica Houston last year, hmm. and. Um, I just like her as a person. We just we click and we get along, and uh, that and I really wanted to be back on stage again. I've been kind of all over the place, mm -hmm. but I really I really wanted to be here working on something. I like the women's project, um, and then I read it and was like, you know, I could see myself in this. And uh, I actually originally went up for the part that Skylar's playing, Skylar Aston, yeah, which is hard to imagine. Uh huh. Like yes. us switching parts, I think. For, for people who see it, it would be it'd be tough to picture. It is hard to imagine after yeah. seeing it. Yeah, so yeah, let's yeah. talk about this cast. Uh, Skylar Austin, like you mentioned. Uh, yep. Marge Helgenberger. Yep. Uh, let's see. We have, uh, who do we have? Krista Rodriguez, Broadway, yep. who she was here talking about it a while oh, ago. Oh, good, good. Nice, juicy role for her. She's yep. not singing. No. You know, musical actors are always excited when they get to do a show and not have to, not have to sing. I think she said this was her first straight play yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah. yeah she's doing a great job uh yeah a lot of heavy lifting and damien young yeah who i was telling you i know from the comeback he's, right, he's done right. a lot he's done a lot of uh great work on stage and, yep. and on screen uh but he was the husband in the comeback he's, yeah he was uh, yeah he's hilarious in that and in this he's so he's the boss yep krista is kind of struggling it, it is an architectural firm like you said yeah she's sort of new and she's, she's struggling yeah uh, march hungberg has been there a while yeah and how do you fit into it uh so i'm basically there i'm kind of like Stu's right hand man so mm -hmm. so damien's right hand yeah. man trying to keep the firm from falling apart trying to keep people from being distracted by their emotions and these uh political issues yeah and uh I don't know that I do such a good job, <laughs> you know? Right. Things c kind of fall apart anyway. Right. So what do you like about performing this play? Uh, what, do you, what do you like about sort of the rhythms of it and the way it uh -huh. builds? Like uh, I, I like that. Um, it's definitely a comedy. I guess they're saying it's kind of a dark comedy. But I like that on any given night, there will be people who uh, have their own totally unique response to it. Mm -hmm. There are people who, who get very introspective and who... Almost, almost seem hurt by some of the subjects that are, that are coming up throughout the play, and then there's other nights that it's this uproarious reception, um, and I like the surprise of that. I think I think the best, one of the best things about being on stage, period, is that there's room for surprise. Mm -hmm. You know, with with the camera, you kind of hope to catch lightning in a bottle. You just got to do it once, but. In, in the theater, there's there's a lot of room for a lot of surprise. Yeah, and uh, it's it's fun to feel that communion between an audience and, and the actors go through surprises together. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been enjoying that. I was surprised by uh, the use of the title. I mean, you find this out sort of quickly. Right, right, right. You know, right. You, you think uh, this is not much of a spoiler, but you kind of think this is what the women are. Th but it's actually Damien's character, right? correct? Who says this is what we're up against, dealing with right. having to negotiate, right? You know, working with women, and I was like, "Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. That it's interesting. Yeah, yeah." yeah. Uh, and the audience, when I when I went, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of like sort of uh, verbal reacting to things, and they're so yeah. close to you. I'm sure you're you're experiencing all that. We've had people speak up, yeah, talk directly to us. You know, I yeah. know oh, you didn't that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, been, there's been a lot of that. So you were in, I, I loved that uh, revival of, of Mice and Men. Oh, man. That was it was my favorite. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. Fantastic revival uh, with James Franco, yep. and Chris O'Dowd, right? Yep. Uh, and directed by uh, uh, Anna Shapiro. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, so great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, that was one of my favorite revivals I've oh, seen. Oh, cool. Like, cool. It was a really beautiful production. Um, so I love talking about it. Yeah. Did let's you, talk about it. Well, how was the experience of doing it for you? It was great. It was my first. Broadway, yeah. anything. I, you know, like I said, I'd done small theater stuff yeah. in L.A. I lived in L.A. for 12 years before I moved here. And um, I was doing a movie in England and I was like, please just see me. I'll fly in, flew in, met with Anna, who I, I had obviously heard great things about and, and yeah. knew her reputation. But she was just so uh, smart 
and she's very attuned to what everybody needs and mm-hmm. and so I walked out feeling pretty good and got the call that I got it and it was it was a different kind of thrill than getting a part for TV or mm. or movies it was it was exciting and uh, yeah and then we got to work and I think I think we did a good job of living it out in that world mm-hmm. and I think we did like 158 shows or something and yeah. and I, there was never a show that I walked through that I wasn't grateful to be doing it was it was it was a joy every time we did it was it scary to when you first started you know what was scary was the invited guest uh-huh. so like 200 people came for the uh-huh. invited guest my mouth went dry my hands were sweating <laughs> the next night there were you know 1100 people there and then it was all good yeah but it was that first time of kind of knowing the size of what we were trying to pull off and, and showing it to people I got a little nervous and after that it all went away. And then you had all the James yeah. Franco fanatics. And there were a couple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. There were a couple hundred I thousand. remember that stage door. <laughs> Man, yeah, yeah. You had to fight to get home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alec wants to know, what, do you have a dream role? Do you have a, like a dream theater role? Or is there anything classic? I or? did burn this um, in, in L.A. a yes. couple times. Bedford Wilson. I would love to do that in pale, New York somewhere. You play somewhere. Pale? Yep. That's a great role. I think... Dangerous I, role. I love He's it. He's a dangerous guy. I love you it. You like walking that line? I love it. I'm, I, I, you know, the, the thing that's interesting about the play that we're doing now is I, there's, there's no real personal dilemma that comes up. The guy's not heartbroken or, you know, falling down drunk or mm-hmm. running from the cops or anything. It's... It's... it's business that's very very important to uh to ben in the play but i'm not used to that i like things where your whole life is kind of in the balance Mm -hmm. and and burn this is just such an open bleeding heart of a play and uh i loved it i'd love to do it out here but i know everybody wants to do it everybody wants to play i mean it's a great role i remember when when i was a teenager i read that script over and over i just loved it so much john malkovich joan allen on the did you see that when he when john malkovich did it did I see what he did? I didn't the see production. him do it. No, okay. no. And then Eric Roberts took over. Yep. I mean, yeah, it's like that's like this. And then Mickey Rourke did it at one point, didn't he? I think. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I it's, would love to see that. Yeah. I see Mickey Rourke in that part. Do you have a? Um, yeah, it seems perfect. Yeah. Do you have a? Um, Anna, that's her name, right? Who would you want to do it against? Do you have anyone you would want to do it against? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, are we just like fantasy drafting? Yeah. Why not? Let's um, Maybe like the ghost of Eleanor Duzay or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why not? Let's do yeah, that. Why not? <laughs> um, Lloyd wants to know: Do you keep in touch with any of the True Blood people? I do. So how yeah, long yeah, have yeah. True Blood been off the air now? Three years now. Three years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it first entered your life when? In, like how long ago? Two thousand seven, I think. Okay. Uh-huh. So about about ten years, ten ago. years ago. Yeah. Um, you gotta love Hoyt, man. I mean, oh, thank you. I mean, he's so good. Thank you. And True thank Blood, you. you know, I've talked about True Blood a lot with people because there's so many TV shows that start and there's all this buzz about them. And everyone's like, saying, yep. this is a great show, this is a great show. And so often I just think, and I remember when I watched that first season of True Blood and how blown away I was. And I'm always like, I wanna fall in love with something on the level that I fell in love with that. It was really compelling. I think, I think, particularly because I don't think there had been anything quite like that like yeah. there was a combination of elements with that mm-hmm. show in the, yeah. in the first season or two that i don't think people were familiar with yet and um it was really really exciting to be a part of it so yeah i i've i've kept up you know loosely not the way you'd like to but it of seems course. like everybody got busy after that show yeah but um <clears throat> i got a lot of love for a lot of people on that show and then of course you know nelson passed away this year that was tough yeah um, yeah it's awful yeah he was he was a big hearted dude and um, yeah so that I, th- I think that kind of had people getting back in touch again for a mm-hmm. while and I think I think we had a lot of appreciation for each other over the years doing it mm-hmm. yeah I like your Yankees hat me too and what's your what what is this what's this a real place I got a story man my what's friend what's and my tavern f- I don't know <laughs> because my friend who is uh, who was a police officer J R Carter. He's a terrific actor, uh-huh. and he's working like crazy now because he has skill sets that almost nobody else has. He was a, he was a murder homicide detective. Wow! Now he's an actor. He had this in his car the other night. I was leaving the theater, and I was cold. And he was like, "Yeah." <laughs> uh, so, what up, Jr.? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Elise wants to know: Vampires or werewolves? It's werewolves. Very, oh, werewolves. That was it. Very. Like, would I rather be? I don't know. Werewolf. Would you rather date? 
<laughs> Werewolf. I've, I've pressed my luck with the other thing, you know? Uh, Lloyd wants us to know that Lois Smith is uh, back on stage to spring a signature. Oh, man. Gotta love Lois oh, Smith, man. man. I just watched, um, my friend and I just watched Five Easy Pieces. Mm. And then later the, in that week, we saw East, she's of, in that? East of Eden. She plays Jack's sister in that. Oh, I didn't realize that. And then, and then she's the young girl at the bar at the uh, brothel in East of Eden. And I was like, I had these stories, these Lois Smith stories from the one day I was ever on set with her. But she had flown out from New York to L.A. to do a full day of shooting. She, was, she had like a Monday off. Yeah. Flew out. She had this big speech. They shot her out first, and then for the whole day, even though she wasn't on camera, she was like crafting out the speech and working wow. on it all, even, even though she was done. Wow. And I think it was just, it was, it was a treat. So what, what, what's she doing on, on Broadway? Something at the Signature Theater. Oh, I'd love to see her. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's fantastic on yeah, stage. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, I first saw her on stage, and I was excited when she got stuff like that, like yeah. True Blood. Yeah. So what's the Brooklyn Actors Lab? You're, you're like a teacher too, right? The Brooklyn Actors Lab is, um, is an acting school uh, that I started under a different name three years ago and then kind of started finding a, I had to find a way to put it together in a way where I could also have a career. Uh -huh. I kind of went all in on the school for a few years and forgot that I like acting as well. Oh, <laughs> right. So um, it's, it's a group, we have, we have an ongoing two year program that we're wrapping up and then we're gonna take sections of that training, um, you know, pieces of it and do them six eight weeks at a time so that if people want to continue and uh the training and go through mm -hmm. all of it that's available to them if somebody wants to sharpen something or learn something about um any one particular aspect of it they can do that too mm -hmm. but we're out of uh prospect heights in brooklyn i have a studio up there cool yeah so people can find out information online. yeah 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 um do you think great actors are born with something or can it be can it be developed, or what's your thought on that? I think I think they have to be born with something. Yeah, some sort of like instinct, or. But I think that without development, um, you know, whether it's just strictly through working or through training or through, yeah, you know, those, those are kind of the two avenues I can I can think of off top. But without something to give them an opportunity to put what they're born with to a test of some kind, mm -hmm. I think it could just lay latent for an entire life. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I think, I think there has to be some seed just at the moment of entering this world where, where you yeah. have something. Yeah. Then what you do with that after that, I think is, yeah. is maybe the more important question. What's been the hardest thing about uh, pulling off what we're up against? Has it been a relatively easy show to get up? And there's great chemistry with all of you guys on stage. It's, it's hard because I find myself not knowing what to do without like a, some sort of gaping internal struggle. My uh, struggle really in this play is with other people, like get it together, <laughs> you know, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm used to, and, and, and that's why it's, it's a challenge. Like I, I feel like it is really, really revealing something to me that maybe is a shortcoming of mine that I don't, I don't necessarily immediately know what to do about problems like that hmm. in, in an, an imaginary situation. Um, with, without there being some sort of like broken heart or, or something, uh -huh. like, I, I don't, I, I feel naked. I'm like, what a, uh -huh. I, wow, I've never in the theater really had to act something like this before. Right. And so it, it could just be me feeling like, oh, you're not doing enough because I'm not suffering or something, you know? Just but add a little bit of pale to him. Just give him a few pale moments. Oh, I've thought about it. <laughs> believe me, believe me. I think it would, I think it would take things in a different direction. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I've thought about it. <laughs> I've flirted with it. Um, Krista Rodriguez could be Anna, why not? She'd be good Anna. Yeah, she yeah. could do that, why yeah. not? You know, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, well, so the show opens, what, on Wednesday night? Wednesday night, yep. It's a terrific play and a terrific cast. And I really want to encourage you to do Burn This, even if you do it in some garage somewhere in Brooklyn. I'll Tell somebody, man. I'll, I'll Let's come go. see it. Yeah, just <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do it in a, in a garage. I'll we do can it. do it here, actually. We can just do it. You and Krista can just, we can do this here. We'll do it under a bridge. Yeah, you could do it here. Tuesday mornings could or something. Do it here. We'll just, we that could be audience. the window that looks out to the river. You know? <laughs> be great. Uh, I think you're a terrific actor. Thank you. And I'm I really happy that. that you're back on stage. Thank you, man. So thank you for coming by. And everyone needs to check out what we're up against. That's what the guys were up against. All the girls are up. I mean, there's a lot. It says a lot. We're all up against ourselves. Everyone's up against one. everything. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and uh, go check out Jim and, and have a good opening Wednesday night. Thank you, man. Appreciate I hope it. To see you soon. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, uh, tomorrow we'll be back at five o'clock with another great guest. Bye. Thanks for watching.